I'm photographer David Dushman, and this is Vision is Better, a sometimes weekly podcast about the craft and art of photography. Welcome here. Hey, today we're talking about how to take care of your camera, how to clean your camera. I got a question on Facebook that says, you know, you do a lot of these crazy trips and and you're exposing your stuff to a lot of hard uh, hard elements. How do you how do you keep it clean and that sort of thing? And and I think the first thing that I should tell you is I'm. Um, I'm probably the last person to ask if what you want is to really baby your gear. I, I don't treat my my cameras really any different than I would treat any other tool. I take care of them in as much as I need to so that they'll operate well. But um, my stuff is um, I've got my little my little Leica here, but my stuff's all dinged up and scratched and and really. Um, I, I throw my cameras around my neck and or around my shoulder. I like to wear them sort of bandolier style, so they go crosswise across my across my body, um, and they get kind of beat up. They they really take a, a beating. But the the thing I think you need to understand is that most of these cameras, uh, they're incredibly well built. These days, the coatings on lenses are so good. The the cameras themselves, even the non weatherproof stuff, is really. Uh, it's built really well. I have ne I have yet to scratch a lens. I have yet to kill a camera, and and so if you want to maintain resale value on your camera, keep it in a box, put it on a shelf. If you want to use your camera like the tool it is, uh, then you know just be smart with it. Uh, I don't. Uh, so I'm going to break this down into two parts. One is sort of preventative stuff. I don't use, and I have, but I no longer do. I, I don't use UV or skylight filters on my lenses. I I, I, I rarely even use camera bags, traditionally speaking. I, I throw my stuff. I have these, these are uh, these wraps are made by a company called Buff, uh, B U F F Buffs. Um, they uh, they make all kinds, different colors, and I'm pretty sure there's several knockoff companies making them. But they're just a they're a fabric tube and. Um, and I, I like them for a number of reasons. One, I can wrap lenses. I have a dozen of these. I can wrap lenses. I can wrap cameras. If the weather is particularly bad, um, I just shove my camera inside a wrap, and I can I can keep the strap out, so I can just slide it over um, and slide the camera out when I need to to use it. Keep the buff on there. So if this is on my shoulder, the buff is already on there, and if I need to, I can just slide it over the camera and protect it from dust or a little bit of rain. I can use it to wipe things off. I can use it if the sun gets really hot. Um, these are great to put on your head, or you can wear them around your face and keep dust out of your face. So I'm a big fan of these, and then uh, for lenses and stuff I'm not using, I just wrap them in a buff and toss them in a shoulder bag. I don't generally these days when I'm working, when I travel to and from a place, um, of course, I use traditional kind of camera bags. I prefer the ones from Think Tank Photo or Gura Gear right now. Uh, both of them, make, but every, they all make fantastic camera bags. Low Pro makes great bags, and um, I, anyway, you name it. There's lots of ways to get your gear there. But when I'm working, I really don't like all of that padding. It just adds weight, and I haven't found it terribly useful. Like I said, I, I have yet to kill a camera, and um, and I've had dozens and dozens of cameras over the years. Um, so I don't use the filters. I, I find I spend thousands of dollars on these lenses. There's no reason to put something else in the front. I don't like the ghosting that they give me. I don't like what they do to weird lens flare because I like lens flare. Um, and I, I just there's no reason for me to use those. Now, if you want to knock yourself out, um, that's kind of preventative stuff. Um, in terms of actual maintenance and cleaning. I haven't had lens cleaning solution in probably 20 years and I don't own any lens tissues. I carry in one of my bags I carry, this isn't very sexy, but this is my, um, I call this my oh shit kit and it's uh, it's a bag made for uh, by Gura Gear. Think Tank makes a similar one and it's clear on one side, uh, but the reason I like that is not so I can see through it. Uh, I can stick gaffer tape on it, strips of gaffer tape, so if I need to repair something or mark something as my own, I have some gaffer tape available. That comes in really handy. Inside of this, I always have a bag of um, microfiber lens cloths. I like the big ones. I don't like the little fiddly ones. I have dozens of these when I travel in various pockets, um, and they're nice and big. I can clean a uh, lens with it. I can clean my glasses, and um, 
you know, once they get really dirty, I just throw them in another Ziploc bag, throw them at the bottom of my luggage, and when I get home, I wash them. Um, just don't put any fabric softener in, in there with them. Uh, but these are, these are really great. This is all I use to clean my lens, and that, that may shock some of you. I'm not even suggesting this be your approach. It's the approach, approach that I use. I just breathe on my lens and clean it off. And if I don't have one of these, I use my shirt. Like I said, the coatings are so good. I have yet to scratch a lens. And, um, and you know what? Even if I got a little scratch in, which I have yet to do, um, and unless I'm concerned about resale value, in which case keep it in a box, uh, there's no reason for me to worry. I mean, a tiny, tiny little scratch isn't going to show up on my image quality. I am much more concerned about getting the photograph, making photographs, than I am about taking care of my gear. Having said that, you know, the, you want your gear to work. So I always carry those. Uh, this is kind of my micro oh shit kit, and I'll tell you what's in there in a second. I'll just show you what's in the rest of my cleaning kit. Um, I have a blower. I just a rocket Johto rocket blower. It's not in here, it's in my camera bag. Um, I use that for most cleaning, just uh, and Then the other thing I carry is, is a couple dozen of these sensor swabs. These ones are by Delkin, uh, but there's, there's lots of them out there. Um, I don't know what these ones are, but I just, I carry a bunch of sensor swabs. I carry a, uh, a bottle of uh, sensor solution, which <laughs> turns out is now completely empty, so that goes on my list to, to buy a new bottle of sensor solution. And, uh, and the other thing that I carry is, let me find it here. And I, this one's made by Pentax. Uh, it, it's, I call it like a sensor lollipop. I don't know what these are called, but if you take this out of its handy little case, it is literally like a lollipop stick. Let's see if I can focus that. It's literally like a lollipop stick with a gummy bear on the end. And um, it's a sticky kind of rubbery thing and it comes with a little pad of sticky paper. So you peel one of these off and you, uh, you apply this to the sticky paper to clean it off any gunk. And then you literally lock your sensor, your mirror up for cleaning, and you just stick this on and it'll scare the hell out of you the first time. You stick it on and pull it up. Stick it on, pull it up, and you might want to go back a couple times to the to the sticky paper and clean it. And this will not work if you're trying to get oily residue off. This is for dust. If you have oily stuff, you, you, you're going to want to use these. And the reason I carry a dozen is because one is never enough. In fact, uh, if you have a dozen sensor swabs and a bottle of sensor solution, uh, you probably will also want a bottle of whiskey because I find cleaning my sensors about the least enjoyable, most stressful thing that I do. And if you don't have enough swabs, um, for me it usually takes five or six swabs. I hate doing it. Um, I don't have this the the most. Um, um, I don't have the hands of a surgeon, so I uh, I make my mistakes. But most of the time, this does it for me. This gets off kind of the stubborn dust. If you have, uh, if you have oily bits, though, make sure you have a sensor um, swab and a uh, bottle of solution. So this is what I use most of the time. You can get this at B&H. I'm sure you can get it on Amazon. Um, just do a search for sensor cleaning or sensor, I don't even know what, just sensor wand or something. Um, but you'll find it. And it's cheap, it's easy to carry, and I really like these. That's what I use to clean my stuff. I usually will have a couple of Q-tips if I need to clean dust, but while I'm on the field, I rarely need to do much more than just kind of clean it off. Worst comes to worst, it's really dusty. I might sort of wet down one of these lens cloths and wipe, wipe my gear off. That's what I keep in my oh shit kit. I also keep a smaller little tool kit here. I have a couple of, um, couple of these jewelers screwdrivers that I find really handy. I have taped together so I don't lose them. I have a couple Allen keys, one of which is a Gitzo tripod wrench so that I can tighten up bits and pieces on my Gitzo. And, um, and then there's other things in here. There's some little tiny, tiny, tiny little things of crazy glue, which I find sometimes very handy for bits and pieces. And it's usually not my camera gear that breaks. It's usually something else. Uh, I have a tiny little roll of duct tape that I keep because that can fix literally anything. And, uh, and I have a small, tiny little, this one's by Gerber, a tiny little micro plier. Uh, it's got a tiny little screwdriver, it's got tiny little scissors, it's got um, several tiny little things, uh, and, and a wrench. Um, so a pair of pliers. 
So uh, in that, which and this is pretty small, I can throw that in my duffel bag and it doesn't weigh a lot. Um, but between all of that stuff, I'm I'm pretty equipped to to handle if I you know if I break anything or if anything kind of needs being held together. Uh, but for me, the key is not going overboard on this stuff. These cameras are made so well, and I don't want this, you know, this is my caveat. Um, you need to do it the way that you feel safe with. Um, I often, depending on where I'm going, I will carry some, some plastic bags. Uh, so if I have to be out in the rain, if I was photographing wildlife in the rain, I might have think tank hydrophobia covers. But you know, really, there is a certain point at which people say, well, you know, what do you do to protect your stuff from the rain? Well, they invented these things called umbrellas. That work remarkably well and there is a certain point at which when it's that wet out um, I don't want to be photographing and my camera will last longer than I will in the rain there's a certain point when there's so much rain that I can't see what I want to photograph so I will usually it's enough for me that I can throw my camera in one of these buffs toss it into my bag and uh, you know treat your stuff with care and respect but don't go overboard on it because you know at the end of the day uh, not to make too big of a deal of it but you know gear is good but vision is better and it's what it's vision that's going to make your photographs take care of your gear keep your sensor clean we'll see you next time on vision is better